I think it's going to be fun to go to courtside today and see all these full-time campers. I mean, these are people who have decided they're going to live in their wheels all the time. Greetings. We are Cal and Momo, and we live and travel in our 1976 Airstream Argosy motorhome with our furry friend Kiki. On the first day of 2024, we set off from Athens, Georgia towards Baja, California, only to get stranded in Alabama with a broken transmission. After three weeks in the repair shop, we were able to keep driving west after the transmission was fully rebuilt, along with other much needed repairs. We spent time in New Orleans with our friend Anthony, enjoyed the river walk in San Antonio, and camped in Quartzsite, Arizona for a few days before making it across the border to Mexico. place here at court site. Skadden Wash. Yes. Momo said, I want to be next to a tree. Okay, well, there's a tree right there. <laughs> you want me to say more, but... No, no, say it again because I didn't catch oh, it. Oh, it's like being on the moon. As for the town, I don't know. We just went to Roadrunner grocery store and there was a nice looking fellow uh, with ears that stuck out to the side. Did you notice his ears, Momo? Yeah. The fellow that uh, checked us out at Roadrunner grocery. No, I didn't have my glasses on and I didn't feel social enough to look anyone in the eyes. Well, his ears stuck out very nicely. Like an elf. I like it when people's ears stick out. That's one of the things I, I find very wonderful. <laughs> I'm glad because I used to feel so insecure about my ears that I was I would look up ear reduction surgery when I was in high school. Yeah. And, and don't they have something where they like tape them to your head? Yeah, they kind of staple them. Yeah. They staple them in the back. I know this because I, I wanted it. They're because really I was, nice. And now I have someone who appreciates I do. my biggest insecurity. Well, at the time, it was my biggest insecurity. Now, it's more of my mental trauma that I'm insecure about. Well, I'd like to say that I didn't take a photo of that fellow because it seemed that it would be very inappropriate for me to say, oh, excuse me, your ears, they stick out so nicely. Could I get your photo for our vlog? Our vlog. <laughs> anyway, we don't know about Quartzsite, Arizona, and how the town is but my impression is that there were a bunch of weirdos all around which I like a lot I mean people in dune buggies um, you know a lot of older people that look like really cool older people I don't know if this is true it's just my impression of it and I it would take more investigation but it's kind of it's really cold I find it to be very cold it's uh, 56 degrees outside but there's no humidity there's a lot of wind 
And I get chilled out there, so I don't really want to hang out here that much. The difference between your outfit and mine right now? Yeah. Exactly. I run hot. So, I have lots of thermogenesis, so. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's something happening. Black sesame seeds. Black sesame seeds remind the eater of death. Quartzite is like living on the moon. This is our survival moon unit, moon unit eight. seems like a fresh vegetable, which is not allowed. There's a giant 
container filled with garlic. Momo is peeling it all. Do you know that about Momo? Momo loves garlic. I do. Yeah, and when we both eat a whole lot of it, we can't smell each other. Yes. But other people would probably be engulfed by a cloud of garlic vapor when we walk by. That's fine. Maybe then no one will bother me while I'm doing yoga. Remember that? That's episode 8, everybody. Inside joke. Inside joke for all of you who have watched episode 8. After an hour of peeling and crushing garlic, look what we have. Ah. I hope the Mexican officials don't confiscate it because I don't think there's any way that this can be replanted in the ground because it is crushed. And it's just like a store-bought crushed, except I did it myself. <laughs> Serving up potato gruel. Potato and quinoa and garlic and sesame seed. Things we cannot bring into Mexico. There's a feeling out here or an invitation to the imagination of thinking, wow, this is what the world has become. The world is now a desert planet and people have to live in their cars. Do you need the FMM permit? We do. See, yes. Yes. It's nice. Little one. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Rechargeable. Yes. I yeah. like it. I like it. We need the TIP, the tip, and the um, FMM. F yeah. Where are you going? Baja. Baja? Uh -huh. The beaches. We thought we'd go to La Paz and then take the ferry across to Maz, Mazatlan. Ma Mazatlan. You like Mazatlan? We haven't been there before. We've only been to Yucatan. Oh, really? Yeah. Nice. So we want to see this side. I love Mazatlan. Uh -huh. I like it. I've heard great things about it. Okay, perfect. We passed our inspection, which is as to be expected because, again, we are not doing anything illegal. And now we're gonna go take all our documents in to get a FFM, or sorry, FMM and TIP. <laughs> Entrada, entrance. This is very amazing. There is no line. Yep, not allowed? Oh, okay, okay. At the Ben Hercito, everyone has been very nice and patient. And yeah, the language barrier there is one. There, I mean, you know, there's there's some there's some language barrier for sure. It definitely helps that I know some Spanish. Of course, it'd be helpful if I just knew it. But you know, if you if you kind of have an ear for it, and you're open to being a little humble. <laughs> and, you know, taking things slow, then you can get through it because um, people know some English here too. Not not a lot, they always say poquito, and I say, oh, mi espanol poquito. But it's okay, it's, it's okay. Good vibes. We made it through, Cal. Well, there is still a barrier. Oh, it just lifted. Nice. <laughs> Turn right. I think this took about I don't know, maybe a little less than two hours? I don't have a timer on my phone. Yeah. But it was not excruciating. I mean, it was a little inefficient because we went to get the TIP before getting our FMM. But, you know, they had already, they had already looked at our paperwork and they were just like, oh, you need to go to the immigration office wasn't like, oh, you did something terribly wrong. It was just like, oh, go here first. And then there was barely any lines. Uh, 
I have to concentrate even more on driving here. The road, the road, the lanes are a little tighter. There's something about it. We've got a thumbs up for our motorhome already um, by this guy on a, with, on a moped. We made it to Kiki's campground in San Felipe. Felipe, I'm overjoyed. We have our own little place above us where we can go up to the top and check out this view. So there's the Argosy, and then look. There's the Sea of Cortez. Kiki's Beach. This is camper heaven. Good morning. Good morning. Hi. How are you doing? Great. I love you, camper. Nice to have something solid, sort of, you know, hookups and hot shower. This is our first day in Mexico. If people say, what became of Momo? The answer is, Momo found a semi-cave in Mexico and stayed there meditating until Momo's fingernails grew very long and Momo's hair grew very very long and Momo became a golden ray of light that dissolved into the horizon so let's let Momo meditate there for a little bit and consider some other things going on in this beach such as this wonderful archway so you were up in that little hole archway thing i didn't get all the way up there i was just down here oh he can stand that's good i was just here right here and i d it doesn't look that bad but if you try to walk in this this is crazy stuff, man. Yeah. It's just very irregular. And my shoes are a little kind of wobbly. And probably slippery. Yeah, they do, they're they not designed really to support. They're not boots or nothing. Your shoes are great. I want to get Keens again because I enjoyed having those for many years. But the bottoms of them rip up. In any case, you really have to think about it. I mean, this is... So where did you fall? Right there, more or less. I mean... Okay, that makes sense. It's just, very uneven. It's very uneven. I fell right here and I hit myself. Look at how jagged those rocks are. I mean, if your head hits it... And I fell. I mean, I literally fell. Oh my gosh. So it hurt. My sacrum is a bit sore from my fall earlier. I've just added water, and this is water from Mexico that there's that question about how to prepare it properly, uh, like boil it. Don't just drink it. So we're going to work with that. And we've dumped the poop and the gray water. So we're really refreshed in a lot of ways here at Kiki's. I had a hot shower. It was so hot, I even had to turn the cold a little on. Huh. So, that was amazing. I could have stayed there for a long time under the hot water. I'll be taking a shower next year, whether I need it or not. Here we are on a road along the coast. It's a good looking road. And there's almost no other car on this road. Here is a, actually, 
here are some cars, but I, I turned my camera on because it was so unusual. There's so few cars on the road. At the same time, fuel here in Mexico appears to be almost twice as expensive as in the United States. That is really expensive. And how can people afford to drive around? I think they cannot afford to drive around, and therefore there's no one on the roads. It's very unusual. In America, the roads are crowded. People are driving all over the place. And here, the roads are empty. Seems like a development that got started but never got completed. Here is the pathway to heaven. There's the Argosy down there. Look at the steam coming off this stew. It's a new day. We're on the east side of the Baja Peninsula. The tide is low. I'm out here in low tide with the seagulls. You can see all that way, all this kind of browner part on the ground, that's all going to fill up with, with the tide. To, to all the way over there would be the beach. It's an incredible shift. This is my art nowadays. Momo going to the beach. Momo is at the beach again.